What's up guys, it's Jake and Mitch from Prism Supply. Today we are going to show you how to install our 82 to 2003 Sportster hardtail kit. We have step-by-step -step instructions posted on our website, so we're going to be following along with those as we do the video. We have a 2001 Sportster here. First thing we're going to do is start with disassembling this bike, get down to basically bare frame, and um, then we'll walk you through the next step once we get there. So we got the bike basically fully disassembled. It's optional if you want to take the front end off or not. For us, it helps stabilize the bike, so we want to keep it on. And then we still have the engine in. So we're about to pull the engine out. You don't have to pull the engine out, it's optional. It makes it a little tricky if you leave it in there to, to get to some of these cuts. So for video purposes, we're gonna pull it out. So there's a top motor mount. We had to remove that. There's a motor mount on the front right side, also on the opposite side on the left side. And then there's four bolts that hold the back of the transmission and transmission mounting points. Yeah, right here, and at the top in front of the exhaust. So this bracket goes to here. So there's one, two, three, four, five different mounting points. Once you remove all the engine mounts, it looks like the engine wants to go out that way, but it's actually, it only comes out this way. You wanna get the top out first, and then from there you can lift up on it and pull the whole engine out. And once you figure it out, it's pretty straightforward and easy. The first measurement is 14 and an eighth inches from the neck back. But in this case, it has this dust seal on it and the triple tree and this big weld. We can't get in here to measure. So we're gonna pull the top tree off this dust seal and then measure directly from the neck back 14 and an eighth inches. go. All right. right. There. And an eight. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is after we got this 14 to eighth dimension marked, we're gonna run a piece of tape around it. And the tape is just gonna be used as a guide for us when we cut it to keep it square. Won't hurt to double check here just to make sure we got the tape marked at 14 to eight, make sure you know which side you're cutting at. Do not cut on this side. Cut on this side. Again, verify that it's 14 to eight. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hold a straight edge across the uh, transmission mounting points on the boss part, the taller part of these. All right, then you're gonna get a tape measure. So this is where it's, it's nice to have a friend. You're gonna get a tape measure. You're gonna hold this side to the intersection point right here, the very edge of this, right? Right there, and measure. You, you want the tape measure to be parallel with this bottom bar and measure out five and an eighth. Like that. And then I'm gonna double check that. Five and eight. We're gonna get a piece of tape, run it around both bottom tubes. We've gotta mark the other side as well, but uh, run the tape around both bottom tubes and just use that as a guide for when we cut. that look? All right, so got a, a couple ways of doing this side. You can do the same thing you did over here. Hold a straight edge to these points. It gets a little tougher because it's closer to this, mm -hmm. uh, this yeah. tube here. And then uh, 
do the same thing with a tape measure. Or you can hold a square, keep a square on this edge, and then mark the opposing tube, and then run the tape. I put the Sharpie. Where are you at on that? I'm right on the edge. You know what I'm saying? So if you mark it there, put the tape on the inside of the mark. Okay. And then we're also going to do it with a straight edge, just to quadruple check. And so double checked it, five and an eighth on both. And that's just the starting point. After we cut it, this is the longest it'll ever need to be. It should work fine. You may need to trim, uh, let's say, up to three sixteenths of an inch off, just to make sure everything fits right. But for the most part, five and an eighth is the right dimension. Another check, just to make sure that you're in the right location, is from this bottom brace here should be about two inches. Don't use this for taking your final measurement. It just, that is just to verify that you measured it the appropriate way. So we got a few options for cutting. Um, the option that we're, we typically use is a pneumatic cutoff wheel. You can also use a, an electric cutoff wheel or a sawzall or even a hacksaw, uh, whatever your, your tool of choice is there or whatever you have laying around. We're gonna show you um, at least one cut with the Sawzall, and then probably the other two cuts we'll, we'll do with the pneumatic cutoff wheel. So the first tool we're gonna use to cut the top tube, again, not our, our preference, but if this is all you have laying around the house, it's a Sawzall with a metal blade on it. Make sure you leave extra room, because Sawzall is not a super, super precise cut as compared to a cutoff wheel. Um, and then you can actually grind to the finished dimension. So just leave enough room, make sure you don't cut yourself too short. Yeah, and see, that's what we were saying, where it's just not the most precise tool, and we want to make sure it didn't dive the other direction, which would make it too short, so kind of angled it out this way. Next is a cutoff wheel. We'll cut pretty close with this. It's a pretty precise tool. Try holding it. And there you have it. Oh, get rid of this turd. Now we've cut uh, the tube in half, obviously, back half the frame's missing. We, now we need to square all these edges up, so we're gonna start grinding them, and then we'll double check it with a, uh, with a square, and just make sure everything's good to go before we install the hardtail. All right, so once we think we're roughly square, we're actually gonna check it using square. So hold it to the top and bring the square back all the way to the tube and you can kind of see where we're off. 
So we're going to trim more off the bottom and fix that. While we're doing this, we're going to check it left or right. Make sure we're square that way, which that side looks, that direction looks pretty good. So according to the square, we just have to take off the bottom side. Pretty good. Now we move on to the back. Check it this way. Yeah. Pretty good. good. And that doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer it is, the better. All right, and so the bottom. Uh, Mitch just cut this with the pneumatic cutoff wheel. We haven't done any grinding yet, and you can see it's, it's much closer than uh, using the Sawzall. So this should take a lot less time on these bottom two rails. How close was that? That one was good. This one, the bottom side. A little bit more. On this side. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Everything's cut, everything's true, square. Now we're ready to drill holes to the side and what those holes are gonna do, it's, it's called a, a rosette weld, or it's for rosette welding, um, add some strength. So not only will we butt weld it all the way around the tube, we'll also rosette plug weld it. So I'm marking uh, roughly half inch in from the edge of the tube, so half inch. We're going to drill a 5 16 hole there all the way through the other side. And we're going to mark the exact same thing on the bottom, half inch in, right there. Okay. Now we're going to grab 5 16 actually we're going to center punch it first. Center punch it, uh, get a starter hole going, and then drill it to 5 16 finish diameter. We'll see. After you cut the two bottom tubes, you can double check that they're even with a square. It's a little low. <coughs> it doesn't matter, close enough. So we center punch, now we're gonna center drill. After we center drill, We'll run a 516 drill bit through the holes. Come up with it a little bit. Yeah. This drill size, what we're about to do, doesn't have to be exactly 516. Um, somewhere close to that. All right, so once you drill through the first side, make sure you align your drill bit directly in the other side, making sure your drill and drill are parallel to the ground. So you want to come up there? Yep, go ahead. Oopsies, sleeping on the job. <laughs>
and our drill sucks and it keeps slipping in the drill bits. From my angle, it looks like he's just drilling into your palm. <laughs> After we drilled the holes, squared everything up, next thing we have to do is remove the paint. You want to remove enough paint so it's at least, let's say, a quarter inch past the rosette weld hole. And then also, we're going to come back on the inside of the tube, make sure there's no burrs in here because we want the hardtail slugs to slip in easily. Now we have all the tubes deburred, paint removed at least an inch from the edge, and enough to be able to weld around the, the rosebud hole. So when you get the hardtail from us, it's gonna look like this assembly, and then it's also gonna contain all the hardware you need. This hardware is uh, used for axle adjustment, chain tension here, as well as transmission mounts on, through this plate. So now that we have the hardtail, we're gonna test fit each slug individually, make sure there's no clearance issues. Perfect. Cut the frame, squared everything up, trued it all. Now we're gonna put the hardtail in, make sure the hardtail's straight, and uh, go ahead and put a few tacks in it. Set the engine in, make sure the engine fits fine. The engine fits good. We're gonna go ahead and tighten the engine down, weld as much as we can. Once we weld as much as we can, pull the engine out, and final weld it. So when you're putting the hardtail in, you wanna start with the top tube. Put the top tube in, say, a half an inch, and then from there you should be able to slide the two bottom tubes. And then once it's close, just tap it in. Tap it, tap. Cool. Alright, let's throw some tacks on it. Straighten her out and make it straight. Yeah. Almost forgot. Got it slipped in. Now we're gonna make sure it's straight. You can just tap it over using a straight edge. Same thing here. Okay. Go ahead, Mitch. And I'm gonna check it one more time after he puts this tack on. Again, we're gonna make sure this is straight with a straight edge. Make sure these, the slugs are slipped all the way into the frame. That looks good. That looks perfect. Slugs are in. Let's put a couple more tacks on it. Everything's good, square and straight. Time to put the engine back in. <laughs> you got that sucker figured out. Yeah, I do. Yep. Yep, 
How do I work this thing? Very tidy lefty loosey. Alright. Now we've got all the engine mounts roughly in place. Nothing's tight yet. We're gonna go back to the transmission plate. We're gonna tighten all these first. Make sure those are tight and then work our way back around and tighten the rest of the bolts in no particular order. Just start curves. You know what I do like though? These are already flush. What do you mean? They're already flush against the plate. Watch the engine. That was a weird one. That was a weird one. Oh, that looks good. Now, if you cut your frame too long, you'll be able to see it here within these brackets. Once you tighten the back ones down, start tightening the rest of it, these would be tweaked all kinds of different ways. They'd be all sorts of wonky. So uh, since we have play here, we know that our, our cut width, cut length is exactly correct. That just pulled it up a lot. Say that much. Okay, these are tight. Those are tight. These are tight. Okay. Let's check this, make sure this is straight. Last time. Straight enough. Dead straight. Good job, fellers. We've got the hardtail installed. It's just tacked on right now. We've got the motor in place so we know all of our cut lanes are in the right spot. Uh, next, we're going to come back and weld as much as we can with the engine being in there. So um, whatever we can get to on the bottom as well as the top. And the only thing that we haven't done is, is put these in. These, these also come with your kit. So if you're wondering what they are, these are your axle adjusters or chain adjusters that just go in the, these threads. Obviously, don't need those now, but we can get them out of our way. got the hardtail installed, we welded as much as we could, now we're going to pull the engine back apart, weld the rest of it, grind the welds as smooth as we can, and then put everything back together, and then in part two we'll be doing the oil tank, brake kit, axle kit. Something that uh, a, a lot of or a couple people I forgot is to cut this bar out right here, this little bar. We put that in there so that these don't bend during welding or during shipping. So leave that in there. Uh, weld as much as you can and then cut it out. Last thing.
so we finished welded it. We metal finished the top side, just ground the welds. We still have to do the bottom of this, uh, bottom side of this, but first we're gonna cut this bar out. So we cut the bar out and then go back and grind these smooth. <laughs> At this point, the hardtail is fully installed. Uh, everything's welded, metal finished. Now, uh, the last thing we gotta do is put the engine in. Once we put the engine in, uh, we're done with this specific project, and then we can move into mine the oil tank, fender, whatever's next for, for your bike. So, uh, how many times does this need deadlift in an engine? At least 10. <laughs> I'm gonna have bruises. I tell you what. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Good job. Alright, hold that edge. We gotta guide these bottom pins in. same order of operations that we did last time. Uh, loosely mount the transmission plate in first and then work our way around to the rest of the motor mounts, keeping everything loose, making sure everything fits fine, which it should. At this point everything's fully welded. Um, and then we'll go back and, and tighten everything, starting with the transmission plate. Man, we're like NASCAR with getting bended in and out now. Yeah, for real. Alright, we got everything loosely in place. All the mounts are in place, all the bolts are in. We're gonna tighten these four first, and then move to the top one, and then kind of just rotate our way down. Oh God, hold on. You should tighten the engine once before you tighten. I did. I thought you were tight. Same with these ones. You gotta tighten these ones before we tighten.